Known to the world and all its affairs Searching for truth Searching for truth Searching for truth When no one seems to care Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Cameron Watson and I am so excited to have you. I am the artistic director of Boom. Um, Manoj Kasavan is here also and he is our executive director. We've got a bunch of members of our core artist team. Thank you to our funders, Knight Foundation, Reimprise, Foundation for the Carolinas, United Way of Central Carolinas and the Arts and Science Council. Um, we couldn't have done it without you either. And thank you to our partners, Black Market, CLT, Charlotte is Creative, and the Roll Up CLT. We're all um, vitally important in putting together Act Now and making it such an amazing success and giving us the opportunity to try out a new way of working um, collaboratively with these organizations, which was so exciting. Um, so thank you, thank you to them. I, I get this amazing privilege to introduce you to um, my friend and amazing poet, Jay Ward. Um, Jay is going to be our 
uh, host this evening. He is a National Poetry Slam champion and the Individual World Poetry Slam champion. He's toured nationally and he has a micro chat book, Sing Me a Lesser Wound, that you can um, purchase from Bull City Press. And I have two copies. Um, I have one copy and I bought a copy for my dad. Um, and it's an incredible book, so I highly recommend it. But, and he's just an amazing poet and spoken word artist, but you don't have to take my word for it. Um, I, once I figure out how to share my screen again, uh, will share with you some of the amazing work that he shared with us as part of Act Now. Forever, a protest is just a run on sentence written without hands or gods and never stems from the march turned waterfall of bodies pouring over a police car like wanton flame. Notice, none of the news outlets refer to these folk as animals or thugs or degenerates and no one says the aftermath makes it hard to take their protest seriously because really, they were just expressing themselves after their football team lost, or their soccer team won, or a statue came down. And who even wrote the sentence, if we are speaking legalities, when elsewhere, a man walking backwards is a threat. Ralph Ellison's gun is a threat. Every shroud that names us exaggeration is the body cam footage finally released, but only partial. So Fox News quotes Rodney King instead of Martin Luther King. Can't we all just get along? And maybe they don't know what King actually said was a riot is the language of the unheard because they were too busy not hearing it while the boy died or the girl was kicked or they both died twice buried by stacks of resistant limbs because justice is irresistible. My question is, if Trump says bad cops are human and make mistakes too. And then a cop in the sky is quoted as saying the guy with his hands up looks like a bad dude. And later a white supremacist is taken alive and to Burger King after killing everyone in the church. Are we praying to heaven or feeding an idol? Or maybe the question is, how do we do this so it makes sense? stops when it's supposed to. Why do we have to break rules in the name of clarity just to be scolded for use of particular grammar? Notice, my hand is not in this. The ink keeps moving on its own, red and indelible. Notice how tiring it can be not seeing color. We see blood and you see black. We see protest and you see black words. We see poetics and you see a ceaseless volley that pains the ears but goes unheard, becomes an exodus labeled beast, meaning it's easier to focus on words than injustice, broken windows than oppression, meaning if it exposes you as the problem and you yelp and I misquote King, a hit dog will holler, or I misquote God, we will tire out if we don't win the race for life. Then, and then, and then, and only then, I will stand on a street corner in my Sunday best, screaming all the scarlet text at apathetic passers-by. Who wrote this poem but you? Who but the zealot who scribes himself holy? Uh, thanks so much for that uh, introduction, Cameron. Um, I, I want to take a moment here to talk about ACT Now and how important it was um, and still is. Um, this, this moment where we all needed to breathe, yes, but to speak, to have voice, um, to have measure. Uh, not that we don't have it already, but that we need as artists to be heard and that we need as a community to be heard. Um, ACT Now was as much a call to action uh, from others as it was for ourselves as artists in the community. To act, to take action now, to call others to action now. Uh, and the, the response that was received from that was incredible. Um, the acts that weren't um, able this time to be on Act Now were incredible. But if you were able to watch the, the three days, the three acts of Act Now, uh, there's no way you could walk away with that without being changed, without feeling something, without understanding more than you did before. Um, and that's what we wanted to do tonight is kind of recollect on some of those things to continue that discussion, but also have a discussion with the artists from Act Now. Specifically, we're looking at um, Act Two of Act Now. Um, 
and having a, a discussion with the art, artists. So Sloan Pearson and Asa Christ are with us here. Uh, I wanna let you know kind of briefly uh, about Sloan Pearson and then we wanna uh, hear for ourselves. Uh, Sloan Pearson was born and raised in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, postgraduate from Point Park University with her Bachelor's of Fine Arts. She began her professional career working with Debbie Allen, Dayton Contemporary Dance Company, and Paul Taylor. Some of the highlights of her career thus far. Uh, she is currently working with Peter Chu as an artist of Chuthis, and I hope I pronounced that right. Um, but we were so, so uh, happy and honored to have this piece in Act Now. But as Cameron said, you don't have to take my word for it. Let's take a look. I can't breathe. I can't. I can't. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Um, can, we, can we do something? Uh, for those that haven't turned their, their cameras on, can, can we turn our cameras on just to show some love to Sloan Pearson for, that, for putting that work together? Awesome, thank you, thank you. Um, and, and Sloan, thank you, and, and welcome. Thank you, and thank you all again so much for um, featuring my work along so many other talented artists, as you see. Um, and yeah, I can't wait to continue chatting. It's, it's crazy seeing it again also now, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we, we do have another video to watch, but before we get there, um, just one question for you, Sloan. Um, when you heard this call to action or this call to apply to act now, um, what, what kind of went through your head at that time and, and what ultimately drew you to, to create this piece? So um, initially, um, this was the week of um, the murder of George Floyd and I was home. Um, I'm in Brooklyn, New York. And um, after seeing uh, the countless videos and um, having discussions with my my neighbors upstairs um, and my friend uh, who was featured, Alex Clayton, um, we kind of just, we wondered if the world understood actually the emotionality and the trauma that Black people experience and have been experiencing seeing these murders over and over and to no justice. So we said, how can we create something that we're not acting, but we're amplifying those moments that people don't see behind closed doors that people need to see to understand our humanity also. 
in our walk. Um, so that's where I was. And that's how we came to creating this work. Amazing, amazing work um, as well. Um, and we'll circle back and talk more about the, the creative process behind it, but also like this moment in time that we find ourselves in, in as artists um, and how we move forward to that. Um, also, I uh, want to introduce here and give a shout out to Asa Christ, who's joined us. And I'll read a, a brief, well, my screen with Asa's bio went away, but I remember that, <laughs> I remember Asa, you went to the University of South Carolina, correct? Um, and also played professional soccer for two years and then moved back to Charlotte. Um, and right now your focus is filmmaking. Um, so we'll, we'll let that be the intro for right now. Uh, you'll see from this video that there's so much more to be said um, about Asa Crest and his work. Uh, but right now, let's take a look at the, the film that he produced for Act Two. Many of you have asked, what does Black Lives mean? Well, you know what a life is, so you just need to know what does Black mean. If I could define it, it would simply be, Black is beautiful, Black is bold, Black is powerful. Black is creative, courageous, and confident. Black is daring, driven, and intelligent. Black is fearless, focused, and ambitious. Black is resilient, relentless, and determined. To be black is to be human. This is why we march. This is why we believe. This is why we fight. This is why Black Lives Matter. Everybody, if you can turn your cameras on if they're not on, you show some love to Asa Christ and for that work. Thanks, guys. Asa, how are you? I'm doing good. Good. Uh, I wanted to point out, uh, we'll see this slide again uh, with the information to donate, but I also want to point out that the, the donation link uh, under Asa Chris work goes directly to um, a fund. And Asa, if you can talk about where that, where that money is going to go. Yeah, so I'm doing a, uh, on my website, I'm selling a canvas print of a picture that I took during the Charlotte protest. And um, I'm selling three different sizes, and when you buy that picture, all the proceeds are going to Heal Charlotte. And if you don't know what Heal Charlotte is, it's just a nonprofit in Charlotte, and they're doing like a million different things. Um, they they do stuff like after school programs for kids. They do stuff like uh, transitional housing. They're feeding the homeless. They're um, I know right now they get, yeah I see someone coming, Greg yeah. Uh, yeah, they're doing great things. And I know right now they're doing their big capital campaign. So um, they're trying to buy a hotel and turn that hotel into a, um, I'm not sure exactly. I think it's more transitional housing or just something to help the community. But it's a great nonprofit organization. And so all the proceeds are going directly to them. Awesome. Yeah, thanks so much. Um, I want to ask the same question that we talked about with Sloan. When when this call to action came out, how did how, how did you feel, and how how ultimately did it guide you towards this work? Um, I feel like everybody when that first came out, we all went through like a wave of emotions, and um, essentially to get to the video, I uh, I kind of took a back seat and was just kind of taking things in for for a little bit. And it just kind of got to the point where I was like, all right, I want to get out and like do something and, um, and just really document what's going on because I went to, for a couple of weeks, I was going to the protest every day and it was really bothering me seeing these, um, these headlines and Facebook posts of people just bashing the protest, trying to make them seem like it was, um, you know, such a bad thing. And that really inspired me to just go out and document because I saw so many positives from the protests here in Charlotte. And, uh, you know, I'm not a, you know, CNN or Fox 
So I was just like, I'm just going to go out there myself and shoot some of the positivity that I see in our streets here in Charlotte. Amazing. Um, and so in, in watching that video, and I think we're going to, I'm going to make this a kind of a question for, for both Asa and Sloan. It's a long winded question. So I apologize because I get long winded. Um, <laughs> in, in watching that video um, and in watching the video of Sloan's work, um, there's always little things that stick out to me as an artist. Um, the, the work as a whole in its entirety is amazing, but there's always like little, little pieces that jump out to me. And then I always wonder if the, if the artist had that in mind or if I am just taking away something and, and other people might be taking away something different. So in, in, in the first video, because there's two, in, in the first video, there's a moment, Asa, where there is one of the artists, I believe, who's looking at the camera and, and starts dancing. Um, mm. And, and there's, there's a quick cutaway from that. But the reason that moment sticks with me is because of what dance is and what it means, but also uh, the, the look in his eyes that, that spoke so much as well. Um, and so that, that juxtaposition of, of, of that image and this moment in time that we're in. Um, and then Sloan, uh, well, actually, I'm, did you want to talk about that at all? Yeah, yeah, I can touch on that. So that's definitely intentional. Because uh, honestly, that kind of sums up what the, that whole particular narrative is about. It's about humanizing Black people which it seemed like during that time, um, you know, I was just really bothered by it. I get a lot of inspiration from Facebook posts, negative Facebook posts, but uh, you know, I'm seeing all these people just uh, dehumanize George Floyd, dehumanize, um, you know, other people by pretty much calling out anything about them that's not perfect. And, um, you know, like, uh, oh, you know, George Floyd did X, Y, and Z in his past. And, the, you know, ultimately they're trying to lead to, he somehow deserved what he got. And um, it seemed like people couldn't identify with him and identify that that could have been like their father, their brother. Um, and so I just wanted to kind of put things in perspective past color that at the, like, he's a human being. And so the whole purpose of that video is to just humanize and um, that clip that you're talking about, it, it was, you know, it's a happy moment. You know, dance represents a lot of uh, positive things. And so it was just a different dimension that I wanted to put in there that humanizes us. Awesome. Uh, it definitely did. Um, Sloan, the, 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 I think the moment for me um, in a video that in itself was, was breathtaking and was moving just through its silence was very moving. But there's a moment in the garden um, where there's this kind of double take of uneasiness, this kind of looking back. Um, and that spoke to me on a, on a lot of levels. I think the silence allowed me to, um, to kind of connect with my own thoughts a little bit about what was happening. And that, that double take uh, kind of did something to me emotionally. Can you, can you talk about like that moment or any other moments that you tried to create in the film? So that moment um, takes me to any space that I go into that maybe I have to think twice before, before I go to a specific restaurant or when I hit a specific side of town that isn't, you know, there's no pro-Blackness, there's no Black representation, there's no welcoming, there, there's racism and also coming from, I mean, Charlotte, North Carolina, you know, you see so much of that, whether you're, I mean, it depends on where you are. I grew up right, uh, right at city limits. You know what I mean? I'm like country girl, but that's where it's, you see it all the time, honestly. So, and those are moments that, you know, privilege, you don't see that. You don't do those double takes unless maybe you see a scary movie and you're out at night and that's something that catches you off guard. Something, a movie versus a lifetime, a, a, a lived experience of, of terror in some way, shape or form. And these moments are specific moments where it's like, do you understand how that shift then happens all over again we we see these videos and we're taking these things in and some people are just seeing them for the first time whereas black people have lived this and 
for whatever reason, privilege, privilege, et cetera, you haven't had to take that in. But now you see it and maybe you see a friend's face. Maybe you see someone closer to where maybe then you can start to see that, wow, this human, this person, this person that I'm in this shared space with, I had no idea that we're in the same room and that they're constantly experiencing this kind, this kind of terror or these types of microaggressions that make you look twice and you have to kind of think like, okay, how am I going to navigate this, this, this situation in this space that is not safe for me? So that was a really important point that I wanted to convey because yes, there's the uneasiness and we're at home and we're processing and receiving all of this information that isn't new, we've been feeling, but then we also have to take that out into workplaces. We also have to take that out into different neighborhoods and things just throughout our lives as a whole and to make that more known. Yeah, very well said. Um, so I, I want to comment on, so the opening video, and I'm not sure if that opening video was, was from you, Asa, but the, the opening video had, a, had an image of a sign that said, um, hashtag it's different this time. Um, what, are your, what are your feelings on whether it's different this time and also how today's current environment, so not, in, not only in the wake, at the time it was the wake of George Floyd's murder, um, but since then, uh, this lack of announcements of, of indictments as far as Breonna Taylor is concerned and also the political climate and the election and the debate last week and hopefully a better one tonight after this. Um, do you find that that something was different this time with you artistically? Um, and how do you think that'll inform your work going forward? So, as far as the um, it being different this time, I had a talk about that with a good friend of mine, and he was, um, you know, we we're just kind of talking about how big of a movement, um, how prevalent it became this year, and we, he, you know, we were both kind of trying to figure out why, and he was like, uh, I think it's just because George Floyd's death, it was so obvious. And, um, you know, you couldn't really argue with it. So it was different this time. And I disagreed because we've just seen so many like that. Um, you know, there, there's so many that we've seen highlighted over the years that, uh, you know, it was clear that, um, you know, j just wrongful deaths. And so, I, you know, I, kind of, I didn't think that was it. I didn't think that it was, um, it was different because of, the way that he died, um, I think it was Eric Gardner who in New York died of, in a similar fashion. Um, and so, you know, it, it took me some time to kind of digest and figure out why it's different. And I think, uh, honestly, I think the pandemic had, did play a big part in it. Um, just because I think people didn't really have a choice but to pay attention. And, uh, you know, people are online and on social media a lot more. and um, messages were getting shared, um, you know, the, the videos I made, Slozen's videos, your spoken word, it's, it's kind of at the forefront of social media now. And um, yeah, I think the pandemic played a big part in just, you know, put your attention here. This is what's important right now. And so, um, yeah, I think that's, in my opinion, what made it kind of different. Right. Uh, how about you, Sloan? Yeah. Um, I do think that the accessibility to each um, unique story and in-depth does um, shift the urgency um, for everyone. Um, when everyone's at home, kind of, you know, like what Asa was saying, you know, it's one thing when you can go to work and go about the rest of your day and then you, you don't really see anything. Whereas, you know, pandemic, everyone's home, everyone's working from home and through working from home, we're all constantly involved with technology or the TV is right there. So it's constantly a reminder, but also kind of like a call to action, if you will. But also, because um, I, I, 
you know, I've been, I've been speaking about this so much with different friends and as far as, you know, how many stories haven't we seen over the years? And I think with these stories, um, especially, I mean, with Breonna Taylor, you know, seeing that verdict and seeing all of the evidence and seeing that, you know, she was absolutely innocent and she was just home asleep, you know, and they've done absolutely nothing. Um, that takes you back to, I mean, her innocence couldn't be any clearer because there's also been, you know, so, so much coverage to where it's so easy. Yes, they've tried to demonize people, but to see the, the brute force used against these in innocent people, there's no level there. You can't like put any dirt to try to tarnish, the, tarnish their repu reputation. There's nothing but, you know, excessive force and of course brutality and of course it's racism and of course there's no justice and that kind of takes me back to I immediately just think of Emmett Till you know there's nothing to deny his innocence there aside from him just being black and I think the way that we're able to view things and, and the the depth of information that we're able to see now is why you know there is a sense of urgency because more people who have not been forced to see these stories that do not live these lives that do not have to worry about brothers and sisters or even being killed in their sleep and no justice because you are black or a, or a cover you know what i mean everyone sees it so now everyone is waking up to it and now there's a sense of urgency okay so now it really has to stop now i really have to you know stop my dad from saying these things or I have to check myself or see what I'm bringing to the space. So urgency, transparency is, you know, allotting for the dismantling now. Yeah, yeah, definitely agree. Um, I'm gonna, um, <laughs> my nose reminded me that, um, <laughs> that, that I probably should chime in on, on how I feel about some of this too, which I will. Uh, but in saying that, I'll say that we have uh, about 25 more minutes left. If you have questions yourself that you'd like to ask of myself or Asa or Sloan, drop them in the, uh, in the chat uh, and we will uh, address them as we get them. Um, hey, actually, I think um, if you guys want to unmute yourself and ask the question, I oh, think great. since we're such an intimate group, um, you can put them in the chat or if you'd like to unmute yourself, um, go ahead. Yeah, let's, uh, so, so uh, hey guys, uh, this is Manoj. Um, Jay, looks like there's another question from uh, LC Mufuka to make, which might actually dovetail into what I was asking, so. Okay, let's, let's see that. And start off by your response. Um, is, can Elsie unmute herself or do we have to do it? Oh, no, no, I mean, it, she's put it in the chat if you want to. You know I talk a lot, so my one's reading. I'm gonna be talking all night. <laughs> okay. the uh, The question was: uh, I have heard your work three different times, and each time I experience a different level. As the artist, do you feel different levels each time you present the same work? And what are those levels? Uh, that's uh, that's a great question. So, from a performance standpoint, um, it depends a lot on the room. Um, I really try to reconnect to the source of the work each time I do it. But if, if I'm in a room with low energy um, and not a lot of people, then I really have to push myself to get to that level. But there are other times I walk in a room and the energy is, the energy is such that I, I know that this piece is needed in this room and I let the piece do the work. Um, I don't, I don't pre-think a lot of what the performance is supposed to be. Um, I just kind of let the, the words do the work in the room the way it needs to be, the way the room needs it, if that makes sense. That, that, sounds, like the, <laughs> that sounds like this like, uh, abstract answer, but in the moment, it's, it feels very real and tangible. Um, this energy creates a different performance. So you might see the same work from me performed a few different ways, depending on just the energy in the room. Um, put this in the chat, but can I follow up by asking you, how does that change when you're performing for a camera in your house because of coronavirus? Yeah, I, I just, like right before I joined here, I performed a video that was gonna be pre-recorded for this event that's happening on Saturday. 
Um, and I, I imagine, I imagine the camera being the person who needs the poem the most. So um, I'm, I'm looking at the camera and, and many times, in many ways I'm looking at myself, which could be a metaphor of its own, right? Um, <laughs> Um, but I'm kind of performing to myself, looking at the camera, just imagining that this is the person who really needs these words the most. That's what I try to do. Um, Asa, um, Asa and or Sloan. Oh, I'm sorry, did, did you have a follow up, Elsie? I just have to follow up, because um, for me as the audience member, like when I first heard you speak was live and I just cried. Second time, I think it was at, um, it was on me watching on a live video and same motions came and then this time yeah, different level if member but also feel a sense of like hope today which is a different feeling that i felt the first time i heard it so i just wanted to share that i love your work thank you so much everybody it was amazing <laughs> you know what i take away most from that from from um from watching myself this time is how much hair I had back then. Mm -hmm. That was a lot. <laughs> I finally got a haircut. So um, I, let me, um, I think circle back with, with Asa and Sloan on that same question. And, and particularly Sloan, you're a performing artist. Um, how, do you, how do you feel performing in front of a live audience versus something virtual like this where you submitted the video? And, and Asa, maybe the same question, but you're not a performance artist, but more so, you have to envision the audience that's taking this in, that's taking the film in, like, and, and how do you prepare for that and how, do, how does that react? Whoever wants to go first. Sly, you go ahead. Okay. All right. So, yeah, I think um, kind of similarly, Jay, um, the energy, in different spaces that I'm performing in definitely does um, give me something to feed off of or sometimes like you know if you can see people if you can catch an eye uh, that shifts each moment because I really that's something in my career that I'm really trying to focus on like where am I how can I be the most present in each moment right so interestingly enough in being on the other side and seeing something that I've done before, um, I'm actually I'm actually extremely proud because I wanted to be so clear that we really weren't acting, that we were being just present in that moment, and our emotions were so raw that it took me back to that moment. The same as kind of you know some some performances you can't see anyone you just see like a huge theater and it's just darkness and it's like well you don't know what energy you're feeling so it's then sometimes it's just what are you projecting out that you do feel so kind of similar but yeah I think also you know it's kind of like how you were saying you know the cameras um who may need it the most sometimes um can you guys hear me Okay. Um, but yeah, sometimes I have those narratives. Sometimes I let myself go to those spaces. So it, it just depends. But yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah. I feel the answer. And I'll just uh, touch on that real quick. So actually, somewhat similar to yours, Jay. Uh, you know, obviously, I'm not a performer like you guys. But um. I still, whenever I finish a video and I'll show it to like a close family or a close friend or a family member, um, even though I've already seen the video like a million times while I'm editing it, uh, kind of how you said, if I'm showing it to someone new that I care about, I'll try to like watch it through their eyes in a way. So um, that's kind of how it like stays fresh to me. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if I just sit here and rewatch it myself, I don't really get too much from it but for sure if i'm watching it with new people i'll, I'll sort of just watch it with a fresh set of eyes I mean, that makes a lot of sense i think i think the core part of my editing process is that when i when i do the work i try to look at it through fresh eyes each time i make yeah. the work yeah um so we have a question from from blues 
Um, shout out to Blues, uh, an amazing host, one of the best spoken word poets in the, in, the, in the land or the world, as we might say. Blues, did you want to unmute and ask the question or do you want me to read it? Silence means I'll read it. All right. Oh, no. Yeah, it's, it's just a little bit where I'm at. But um, yeah, it was more of a question of in these times when, when these things happen to us as creatives, it seems like there's this immediate focus on us to respond in our own creative ways. And I'm just wondering, do you often feel like that? Uh, we did an event just the other night where the two poets were talking about doing uh, a collaborative effort of just happiness, just all happy, joyous kind of weird, funky stuff. And that's, that was like my question. Of course, black people don't live in a monolith. So is, are there times where you just don't want to respond, where you just want to continue I don't want to use the word blind eye, but definitely not ignoring the creative spirit that's drawing you to a place. Like, are there times where you feel like that? And then what's the balance? Like, do you find balance in all of that? Anybody want to tackle that first? Uh, sure, I'll speak on it. Um, so I guess for me, I don't, this was like the first time that I really, uh, stepped out and started doing something like this. Uh, for the most part, my videos are, I'll do corporate <clears throat> commercials, promo videos and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I, I haven't really had a whole bunch of experience stepping out into the community and making videos like this, but after doing it, I can say I'll definitely, um, you know, try to keep doing stuff like this because, the responses that I've gotten since I've made these have been amazing. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I don't have too much history with, it. I can't really speak on, you know, it, you know, all I can say is this past time, I just felt emotionally drawn to, to create and make something. Um, yeah. Um, I would say, Sometimes uh, as a healing mechanism or a way to further process, creation happens for me to keep me healthy and sane. Sometimes it's like I have to get it out and then I have the space to kind of retreat and take time or whatever I need. But sometimes the production is the, my reaction from things. I know. Um, a lot of times throughout this, even if I'm not like creating something um, like a full scale work or production, like I find myself like I'll improvise and I'll dance and sometimes it's for me, but then sometimes, you know, I, so, and also with, you know, creation, what keeps me wanting to create is like, you know, I'm, I'm getting to a point, I see so many um, of my mentees, you know, and people that are searching for some sort of piece of understanding and they're, they're, they're looking to us. Um, and as artists, you know, we, we are the narrators, you know, and we're also through narration, we are educators. Um, and we can reach people not just, you know, through logistics and things like that, but um, through emotionality and through reaching people, we can then help to guide others to healing and to further understanding because um, the two go hand in hand. So um, there have been times where I just need to just sit and I just need to, or sometimes I just like, I need to have a day, I do my to-do list and I just, I'm just a person and I need to feed myself happiness. But especially now and especially when, you know, one thing I know is a fact that every black person right now is feeling some level of something and to see that, you know, wow, like I have a whole, uh, you know, culture diaspora, so many things that have been taught to me wrong. And I need to know why and how to dig deep to do that. And I feel the courage to begin to do that through people that look like me that are also stepping out on that faith and courage. So that's what, that's my piece on that. Yeah, I, th I think those were both great answers. Um, I, I'll 
I'll repeat some of those, but I think for me, um, I think for the most part, when, when things happen uh, that, that we're talking about blues and there's injustices, I feel like there are people uh, more qualified than me and more able than me to put things into words. So I, I generally hold back from doing something as a response on purpose. That being said, a lot of times the response comes because it has to come. Like it's here and it has to come out. Uh, so I don't sit down and say, I'm going to write a poem about injustice today, or I'm going to write, you know, this essay about injustice. Um, things happen and I can't hold them. Um, the, the poem that was shared today, the first draft of that poem was actually written after Keith Lamont Scott. Um, and it was incorporating some of the things that happened then and since then. Um, and with this call to action, um, it felt, it felt wrong that I didn't have to write a new poem to fit the moment, you know? So that's why I did, <laughs> that's why I did one that was, that was older because why, why does this poem still fit? Why does it still matter? I, I'd love for my poem to be obsolete. I, I'd love for people to look back on it and be like, oh, that was a, that was a dark time. I'm glad we're past that. But you know, we're, we're not. Um, I, I think I want to circle back to the question I asked about, um, it, that the, the hashtag is different this time. Um, it's not that it's, it's not that the situation is different. I, I, I don't, I don't know if anybody, I don't know if anybody would really argue that the situation is different. I think the response that that people in mass are having is different. Like the response of our nation to it is different. Um, and you know, it almost, almost to the point where I think there are some companies are taking advantage of it um, disingenuously um, to, to kind of jump on the bandwagon of, of supporting racial injustice. Uh, and they usually do it by supporting a lower tier of it, you know, as opposed to affirming that Black Lives Matter, they say things like stop racism, you know, which I, which I think is a cop out. But um, yeah, I mean, I guess to answer the, to answer the question, I, I don't sit down to do it. But if it's there, it comes out. I used to use an analogy, even though I'm not a, I'm not a visual artist. But I used, to, um, I used to use an analogy that if you're an artist, whatever's happening around you will happen in your art. And the analogy I would give is, if I was a visual artist and I was drawing a parrot, but this was happening in the background, there's going to be some angry brushstrokes in this parrot. Like, something in this work is going to be representative of what's happening around me and how I'm feeling in the moment. Um, that's absolutely true, I feel, with, with poetry and written work, but I feel it's true with visual work as well. Um, so I hope I answered that question. <laughs> but that was, that was a great question. Great and question. can I, if I can follow up a little bit, if, if we were talking, I hear everybody talking about the balance of the work and, and you know, how it brings it out, which leads me to uh, relevancy. Like, do you feel like what you're writing is even relevant? In, in a not, you know, of course it's relevant to the situation, but are you, like, is your voice relevant? Has there, any, has there ever been a time where you just felt like, I, I'm not relevant enough to speak on this topic, even though I'm living this experience? I, I guess it sort of speaks also to the imposter syndrome that we all kind of walk through from time to time. Does that ever creep up inside the work? Like, have you just written and created something and you'd be like, you know what, this, this isn't even, I can't put this out. This won't. This won't resonate. Another great follow-up question from Blues. Um, anybody want to take that first? I can Again. say. Okay, you can go oh. ahead. <laughs> um, I think that for the most part, if it's something that I'm committed to expressing, um, I'm. I feel like that is the time it needed to happen and I'll see it through. And I'm usually like, maybe I'm not like rushing, maybe the process is longer, but whenever I come to a point where I feel like it's ready, then I'm good with it. But for the most part, like so sometimes I just can't create. Um, and those would be the moments where if I tried to like force myself to produce something, then I'd be like, well, I, I kind of don't really, I'm not really interested in that. But I think also um, with the dancer side of me and thinking about like 
the rehearsal and that process and that patience that comes with that, um, each moment in, uh, of that process and remaining patient and present, um, that keeps it relevant for me to see it through. And then I feel like I've created something that really is something that I'm saying. And then um, as far as do I think that my voice, um, I do. Uh, I feel like, especially like, you know, everyone's had their, their experiences and things like that. And when I see like some, when, when like, you know, sadly, you know, no one may have known Brianna in any other light, you know, widespread, you know what I mean? But at the same time, I'm Brianna, you know, like we're the same age, you know, and this is what she went through. And I know like even even yesterday I was trying to get into the studio studio for a rehearsal and I was the only woman of color and I got there early and the guy tried to tell me that I needed to leave the studio space and then I had to wait all the way downstairs because I had a I had half an hour and then my white coworkers came in and they told them to hang out then kick the people out of the studio, let them go in early and everything. And of course I made a thing about it. And I was like, well, they told me, this man told me this, you know what I mean? So in knowing that I w these moments deeply have affected me and I've always felt like I needed to fight, say something, speak. And I always know that it was the women before me that were outspoken and that did stand up that I was like, wow, that that is someone to me and that's someone I need to hear from. So. That's then how I felt. Thank you for that, Sloan. Uh, go ahead, Asa. Uh, well, I don't have a response as beautiful as I, so. <laughs> um, no, as far as relevancy, I'd say for, um, I'm not sure, so I did two videos throughout the protest. The first one was focused more on uh, George Floyd and that one, it just like, I mean, I, I got through that thing so quick because I think it like, was feeling very, like it did feel very relevant. Um, kind of answer your question, please. Like, like I did feel like qualified and, and like I had the, um, you know, everything was kind of working for that one. The other one that they played earlier at the beginning of this um, forum, that one I struggled a lot with because um, I, I don't know, it just, it really took me a while to get through that edit. I sat on it for probably a week and a half and I really wanted to get it out as soon as possible to keep it relevant just because things were, you know, changing daily during that time period. Um, and I really wanted to get the message out. And for whatever reason, I just got stuck on it. And, um, you know, I do hear a lot, a lot of artists say if they, you know, if they get stuck on it, if their heart's not really in it, then they aren't going to do it. Um, but that one, I don't know. I just felt like I needed to and uh, just really took my time with it. And I stepped away from it for a little bit, came back to it. And um, I guess just pushed myself to get it done, even though I didn't feel, um, like the emotions, you know, it, it wasn't flowing the same way that the first one did. Um, yeah, so I'm, I just kind of pushed myself to get it done, I guess. Awesome, thank you. Um, if there's any, we're, we're coming close to wrapping up here time-wise, so if there's any other questions, please drop them in the link. Um, there's a couple There's a couple shout outs I missed earlier, so thanks Manoj. The, um, the video that I referred to at the top top was Joshua Galloway with uh, Jason Jett uh, doing the music. Um, both phenomenal artists. Um, also, there's a uh, uh, shout out to the, I think the mayor pro tens is with us here tonight. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I can't see, I can see Julie, but the second, the, the last name I can't see, I'm sorry. Yeah, it, can I just, I wanted to, I was, typing but I type really slow so <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to say that I really I really appreciate the um, moment as seen through the eyes of artists because you know the comment you made about um, 
does it resonate in the moment? I think that that's the beauty of artistry is that, you know, you might say something a week, two weeks later, and it'll hit somebody who's still trying to process the moment and it'll hit them in a very, in a way that they can hear it. And honestly, in the moment, sometimes there's so much noise around whatever is being said that certainly I can't take it all in. I can't hear it all. And then here we are tonight on just, you know, an average night and you're saying things that it's like, wow, that's really, that's really hitting me. So I just think that's the beauty of expressing um, to people who want to learn, to people who want to hear these things, expressing it through art is so important. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Um, and I feel like as, as art, yeah. As, as artists, it means so much to us to, to know that the, that the words are impactful or the visual is impactful or the auditory is impactful, um, the, the dance, like whatever that art is, it, it means a lot for us to know that that's impactful to other people because at the end of the day, that's why we do it. Um, so again, drop some last minute questions in here. Yeah, Jerry, if I may uh, chime in. So yeah, just to add to what Julie was saying uh, from our perspective. So, um, you know, when the protest started, we really felt like we needed to do something. So, you know, we, we didn't even know what the, what's going to look out, but we just get, got the call out for artists to respond. Then it, you know, then it turned out to be this three part series. So looking back, one of the things we realized is that because we had the call outs as like pretty much as soon as the protest started, uh, we were able to capture some of that raw emotion of that time you know, of that uh, you know, historic moment in the, uh, in, the, in the nation. So anyway, uh, I just wanted to say how grateful we are to all the artists for, uh, you know, the unbelievable amount, I mean, quality and emotion and everything that you see in these videos. And I would really encourage everyone to go to the, uh, our YouTube channel and watch the whole, all the three acts. There's some amazing stuff there, so. Uh, yeah, especially thank, thank you to the four, uh, three of you. Um, thank you. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Um, Cameron, do we, do we have time for a few more comments, questions, or do we need to wrap up? Well, um, since there's that debate this evening, mm. um, hashtag register to vote if you haven't already. Um, Let's do maybe one more question and then head out. And I, I just, while I'm talking, I also wanted to recognize Elfie Lupuka, who is an amazing artist, who also is part of the series. Um, so yeah, she's here tonight. Awesome, shout out. Um, all right, I don't see another question in the, in the chat. If, uh, if I see one, I'll call it out. But if, if not, um, Asa and Sloan, um, so, so this moment that you've responded to, that we've all responded to, um, what, what happens next for you as an artist? Like being an artist of color, being a black artist, what, what's, what's next? Is it, is it more work like this? Is it back to what you were doing before? Um, is there some way that you are like meaningfully impacted where now your art is going to do something along the way? Uh, yeah, so I know for me, um, I'm not sure if I would, if I can't do something, you know, differently, uh, you know, I don't think any artist wants to constantly be doing the same thing over and over. So I feel like if I couldn't um, think of like a different angle or uh, a different way to share a message, I probably wouldn't do it. Um, but what's happening around us is constantly changing situations are always changing and um you know the movement's growing so you know if things are different i feel like i could uh you know deliver a message that's new and different and that needs to be heard then i would definitely do it um as far as what's next for me i actually made a great connection through the protest the uh, man who was narrating um and actually both the protest videos that i made uh, he's, he's, he just has a really incredible life. And so, uh, you know, through this, 
I'm kind of highlighting and expanding on a lot of what this movement's about by doing a documentary on him. Um, and so, you know, I feel like I, I'll be able to really elaborate on some of these themes that we've talked about today and just that have happened throughout the movement. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's what's coming up for me. So, yeah, um, honestly, I want to create or continue to create um, meaningful and impactful works. Um, I also, um, through creating this short film um, and different projects I've been working on, um, my activism is also, you know, through this vehicle through life dance, um, creating safe spaces for, you know, women of color, but also all artists of color. And so I'm definitely gonna keep creating and seeing what that uh, manifests into, whether it's um, more dance things to come or whether to continue dabbling with film. Um, I definitely wanna continue on because it's important and we need it and it's healing for myself also, so. But also I do want to say that um, as a part of this call to action and things, um, uh, getting involved with Boom Charlotte, um, I wouldn't have done this without Cameron. So I'm really appreciative. Um, she reached out to me and after I created the work and said that I should definitely consider um, submitting and I'm extremely grateful um, like you said, she was one of my teachers and I danced for her for a little, so it means a lot. Oh, wow. Thank you. I saw one of the comments about. Oh, yeah. Great comments here. Thank you. Great artist and combo inspiring work. Thank you for your service to the whole community, helping us make sense. Um, I heard artists say recently about how arts and creatives take people to their confrontation point, the place to begin processing their soul in a more direct way than any conversation other or other exercise. I found it to be a true statement and will be using it in my teaching about white supremacy and racial justice. Awesome. Um, yeah. Um, thanks everyone for their comments, for their questions. I, I'll, I'll briefly, and I will very, very briefly answer the question myself, which is what's next for me, I think is, it depends on what's next for the, for the country <laughs> uh, in terms of like what happens with, with my work. Um, but I will continue writing and I'll continue performing and I'll continue collaborating uh, and look forward to collaborating. In fact, Asa Sloan, uh, perhaps at a boom uh, somewhere in the future, you know, we'll collaborate. But um, uh, this has been a great, great, great conversation. I've enjoyed it. I hope everyone here has enjoyed it. Big thank you to Boom and Minoj and Cameron uh, for putting this together, uh, for, for helping us organize ACT Now, but also for this forum to kind of revisit ACT Now uh, and what it meant for us in that moment and what it means for us now. Um, uh, so Cameron's put the donation information up here. Uh, so, and also remember that the donations for ACE's work goes to a, to a good cause as well. Um, I'll turn it over for Cameron or Manoj for final comments. Thank you everyone for being here. Um, you might want to stick around for another five minutes. Um, we have our, another three minutes about, um, we have one more of ACE's films. If you'd like to stick around, we'll end with that. Um, and plenty of time for you to head over to the debate and register to vote. Okay. Manoj, anything from you before I start? No, no, it's, it's all good. Thank you all for being here. And thanks again, Jay, uh, for the amazing job moderating. Thanks again, Lisa and Sloan. Uh, also, shout out to Kia Moore. Uh, she's been streaming live on Facebook, handling all the comments there. And so thanks, everyone. Have a great night. And as Cameron said, please go out and vote.
Just have a have a wonderful night. Thanks again. Thanks, Thank everyone. you. Let's all unmute and clap. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Excellent, as always. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you.